the penny is dropping on the uh, collateral damage of the policy, voluntary policy of government to collapse the economy and collapse society uh, in response to or to contain the threat of COVID-19. And as we'll point out in a few minutes, Mike, not every country took the same policy. So we can also look at countries who didn't engage in the uh, medieval policy of lockdown and national quarantine, non-lockdown versus lockdown. Now, we showed this uh, graph last week. Let's take another look at it. We've updated the figures, Mike, here. Deaths per million, that's the red line. That's the one you really want to pay attention to, Mike, because deaths per million, the, the deaths uh, that a country is enduring, that should inform policy as to what sort of risk uh, the public is at. So this is why it's a very important number. So let's look in. On the left-hand side, you'll see the non-lockdown countries with Mexico in the middle. Uh, we'll explain Mexico's status in a minute. And then the lockdown countries on the right-hand side. And that's the green bars there are cases uh, per million. As you can see, Iceland is right up at the top there. They've done more testing, obviously, so they're going to have more cases per million on record. Yeah, because record. The, the key point here again, Patrick, is this is identified cases. Yes. And there are lots of people, apparently, according to the experts anyway, running around uh, asymptomatic or with mild symptoms. They've never needed to have uh, hospitalization. And so they're not confirmed either way. Yes. These are just the confirmed cases. Yeah. So you, you can't glean too much from the green bar because it really has to do with how active the country's been or proactive in testing. But the red line is what's important. As you can see on the left-hand side, uh, the non-lockdown countries, Sweden, Iceland, Belarus, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and Mexico just went into lockdown, Mike, on April 2nd uh, officially. So they're sort of a half, half and half, hence we put them in the middle. And then you have the main lockdown countries that we're using as a barometer, the UK, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Belgium, and the United States. And as you can see, the lockdown countries are experiencing much higher per capita deaths per million, Mike. And look at the non-lockdown countries. You could say they're outperforming the lockdown countries if deaths and saving lives is the most important metric. And we're told time and time again, every two seconds, it's about saving lives. Well, look at the non-lockdown countries and look at the lockdown countries. And you have to ask yourself, what's going on there? Is there more going on below the surface of this conversation uh, than we're being told? And just to recap there, uh, Sweden, 132 deaths per million. They've gone up in the last uh, week or so. Uh, Iceland, 23 deaths per million. Belarus, 4 deaths per million. Taiwan, 0.3 uh, deaths per million. South Korea, 4 uh, one for Japan and three for Mexico. Mexico is a big country, by the way, large population, about half the population of the United States. And here are the lockdown countries, Mike, very high totals uh, in terms of deaths per million. And again, you have to ask yourself, what's going on there? Are we going to see in the long run that the lockdown policies might actually be driving, or the panic policies, driving up the deaths per million in those countries? Mm. This is a good question. And I might add on the left-hand side, Mike, these countries more likely have achieved herd immunity much faster, and so they probably will not be prone to a second wave uh, as, or, or as much at risk of a, a second more virulent wave uh, than the lockdown countries by choosing the medieval policy of having a national quarantine. I say medieval policy, Mike, because this is what uh, has been described by uh, many other experts. Uh, John Ioannidis used this term as well. Uh, Dr. Shiva has used this term as well. Many other uh, uh, experts and scientists have used this, this term, basically saying this is an archaic uh, approach that's really never been used in modern times, a full national quarantine, quarantine whole countries. We'll take a look in, in perspective, Mike, and people are saying, well, Sweden's absolutely failed. Let's put COVID-19 in context here. Sweden, population 10.5 million, COVID-19 fatalities 1,333. Now, just to put that in perspective, respiratory disease deaths in 2018 in Sweden, 6,997. Mm -hmm. So that's hardly a national emergency by any stretch of the imagination. Hence, Sweden is not on lockdown. 
Now, Brazil, people have uh, commented on Bolsonaro's casual, blasé attitude. He himself was diagnosed with carrying corona. He said it was a little flu. Population, 210 in Brazil, 210 million. Uh, COVID-19 fatalities, 1,924. Mind you, it's a warm climate throughout much of the country, so flu isn't generally a big issue for Brazil. But look at the flu deaths. I just picked 2016, 2000. 220. So, you know, what do we, what can we conclude from this? Well, in Sweden, this is not a pandemic, okay? And in Brazil, it's a non-event. A lot of people say, well, you're, you're demeaning uh, the 1,900 uh, fatalities in Brazil. No, we're not. We're, we're putting it in context, Mike. Mm -hmm. We're saying that there's a number of infectious diseases, a number of different ways that uh, could contribute to the mortality uh, totals in any country whether it be Sweden or Brazil. And where does COVID-19 coronavirus fit into that matrix? Well, it's quite minor, in fact, in comparison to so many other things. So you have to ask yourself the question, uh, do you shut down the economy? Do you put tens of millions of people on the unemployment rolls? Do you shut down society? Do you destroy whole communities uh, in order to uh, mitigate a disease or that isn't really uh, taking as many lives as a number, a host of other, uh, not only diseases, but other uh, lifestyle factors mm -hmm. and general health uh, epidemics in countries. That's the question that nobody asked government when this started. Nobody held government to account and said, on what basis is this lockdown policy being instituted? As we can see, Mike, the non-lockdown countries have got the same or better results without having to destroy their countries effectively. Okay, now <laughs> I, I'm not, I, might, I might be sounding flippant there, but destroying a whole working economy and destroying a society, Mike, that's very close to sort of taking a wrecking ball. It's about as close as you can get to taking a wrecking ball to the nation. Well, that, that, that is the question that we've been asking on this program since the very beginning of this, because before it ever came to the UK and, and Europe, uh, it had already been through China. And there was, there was a fair amount of understanding of the types of people that it was attacking and the types of situations. Uh, look, uh, that's on a national level, Patrick, USA, you mentioned there. But of course, the United States is really like a subcontinent of countries, individual countries. So each state has its own rules in many cases. Some states are in lockdown. Some states aren't in lockdown. So what's going on there? Well, let's look at uh, one of the extreme cases here of sort of draconian measures. This is the uh, state of Michigan. Of course, the Daily Mail has put a heavy political spin on this, as are much of the mainstream media protesters waving MAGA flags, uh, defying social distancing at a major protest at Michigan State Capitol. Governor Gretchen Whitmer is really under fire with a lot of residents because of her new strict stay-at-home orders that are even more strict than some European countries, Mike. Let's take a look at this. But obviously, this is the image here that really sets the media ablaze. Uh, these are local uh, militia in the state of Michigan. Of course, they're coming armed. You can see them AR-15s. That's not a, a shocking sight if you're from a state like Michigan or uh, an open carry state in the United States. But of course, to European readers, they might be shocked at seeing people with uh, uh, guns like this, but yeah, they're exercising their Second Amendment. Um, look, we're gonna show up a little bit of video in a second, but in the video, the, the, the uh, questioner makes a comment about uh, Confederate flags. I don't see too many Confederate flags in that particular image. I think there was a, there was a truck flying a Confederate flag and that made headlines on MSNBC and they did a whole segment on that saying the, the racist element element to, uh, mm. to this. So anyway, hundreds of people came out, Mike, and it was a major protest. And we'll, we'll look at the reaction of Governor, Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer here. This is a segment uh, with MSNBC. Let's, let's take a listen. What do you make of the fact of people flying Confederate flags on your streets to protest a stay-at-home order that's meant to save their lives? It wasn't really about the stay at home order at all. It was essentially a political rally, a political statement that flies in the face of all of the science, all of the best practices and, and the stay home order that was issued. You know, this was, looks like a lot of people and, and it felt like a lot of people, but in the bigger scheme of things, Michigan's a state of 10 million people, the vast majority of whom are doing the right thing. Our hospitals have stepped up, our nurses, our doctors, 
the average citizen who's staying home or is contributing in some way to help people on the front line. That's the story of really what's going on here. This group, uh, this small group of people that came together without masks on, who were passing out candy and with bare hands to children, who were congregating together, who were, you know, wearing, brandishing their weapons, who were uh, having, you know, posters of um, being anti-choice. I mean, this was a political rally. It was a political rally that is going to endanger people's lives because this is precisely how COVID-19 spreads. And let me just add one more thing. The cars were blocking one of our hospitals. So an ambulance literally wasn't able to get into the bay for 10 minutes. This is the kind of behavior that extends the need for our stay home orders that spreads COVID-19, that overruns communities. And this is precisely um, the worst thing that, that could have happened today. I'm all for people having a difference of opinion. If people are angry, and I know there's a lot of angst and people are feeling it and they want to direct it at me, that's fine. I can take it. But showing up and being this irresponsible is not just endangering their own lives. It's endangering all of our first responders and our ability to meet the needs of, of the people of this state who are all trying to do the right thing. I mean, she's really so, in message, Mike, with the UK's talking points, isn't she? Yeah. Absolutely. So she's uh, pushing the same type of narrative that uh, the, the lockdown will end sooner if you behave yourself. If you don't behave yourself, it's going to continue. And, and she also uh, put out uh, a talk, a talking points like the, this is how uh, our, um, uh, our first responders are being put in, in jeopardy because of people out uh, exercising their First Amendment rights, protesting. And that's, that's uh, you know, total demagoguery, complete exaggeration. Uh, this is not how uh, co uh, the coronavirus spreads. And, and the COVID-19 and the coronavirus, <laughs> people have coronaviruses, but COVID-19 are related conditions. Mm. This is the, quote, disease. So most people are asymptomatic. We'll look at what she said about this here, Mike. Uh, here she is. Uh, this is uh, uh, we apologize. This is the only picture we could find with her, uh, with uh, Joe Biden. He's the Democratic nominee. Uh, for president here, but Gret this is Gretchen Whitmer, and this is what she said. They, the protesters, absolutely impacted people's lives today and threatened people's lives. And we've, we uh, will never know the precise number of COVID-19 cases that came as a result of this gathering, but we know that there will be some. She, obviously, she doesn't know, and she can't know, but she's saying that they threaten people's lives mm -hmm. by being uh, outside there. And uh, she continues here, there are definitely people who are asymptomatic functioning in society that continue to spread the disease. That alone, Mike, is a bit of an oxymoron. Well, it's, it's, it's an absolute fear porn statement. She is pushing the idea that you cannot trust the person you're standing beside because they may be asymptomatic and therefore spreading the disease. You've got to be scared of them. And that if you're asymptomatic, you have a disease. And that's not true. Mm. That's not a factual or a scientific statement. Mind you, this is the governor of Michigan talking here. And so she says, we're seeing uh, continuous positive tests. She's talking about asymptomatics. And precisely events like this, which contribute to how long we're going to be under the stay at home order that they were protesting. Mm. So she's saying, if you're out protesting, we're going to keep you under lockdown longer basically. And there she is with Joe Biden. Yes. But uh, moving on. So here's Gretchen. She reads the mean tweets. This was during her, her campaign. Uh, but let's look at what's going on here in, in Michigan with the lockdown. This is her new policy. No gathering of any people who are not part of a single household. Forbidden. Okay. Uh, no travel uh, to in-state vacation or second homes. Large stores can only have four customers per 1,000 square feet of floor space. And uh, apparently, no areas are allowed to be open, Mike, have to do with carpeting, flooring, furniture, garden centers, plant nurseries, or paint. I can't understand why that is the case. I think it does. she doesn't want people doing any work on the home during the lockdown period. So no motorboats or jet ski use. That's a big problem in a watery lake-filled state like Michigan. Uh, so let's take a look here. Now, in contrast, this is my home state, Nebraska, so I'm particularly interested in what they're doing. It's a non-lockdown state, Nebraska, the Cornhusker state. So what are they saying here? This is what the governor is saying. Traveling outside home, the governor hasn't, hasn't issued any stay-at-home orders, gatherings, 10-person limit in public, businesses, no statewide directives, use your own discretion, 
quarantines, no statewide travel quarantine, uh, mandatory quarantines for COVID-19 patients and households, yes. So targeted, targeted quarantines for people who are ill. Bars, restaurants, takeaway only. Uh, so, and also beaches and parks, no statewide directives, up to their discretion, whoever's operating it. So it's a common sense policy, very similar to uh, Sweden. Let's take a look at the United States here, Mike. Non-lockdown versus lockdown. This is the USA. Again, deaths per million. That's the red line. That's the one you want to look at. So in terms of the non-lockdown countries, you have the sort of the main five, Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, North Dakota, Arkansas, there on the left-hand side. And in the gold, you have Colorado, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, New York. We picked a few Midwestern states, Mike, to give a kind of like-by-like -like comparison. We put Michigan uh, there on the end. You can see that's Gretchen Whitmer's state. Yeah. They're not doing particularly well under their uh, uh, strict lockdown measures, Mike. But uh, let's take a look at the numbers there. Uh, deaths per million, Nebraska 11, uh, 8 for Iowa, 4 for South Dakota, 12 and 12 for North Dakota and Arkansas. Colorado, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, much higher in fact. And there's Michigan, 210 deaths per million. That's Gretchen Whitmer's state. And then New York is just shocking, 890 deaths per million. There's been a lot of accusations about pumping up, inflating the numbers on causes of death. You obviously have this debate as well in the UK, Mike, of how they're attributing death, the cause of death, i.e. Uh, dying with uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 and then dying from it and not able to make that distinguish those two things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, this could be inflating the death numbers. But as you can see, Mike, non-lockdown, again, in the United States, non-lockdown versus lockdown, there's a big difference in terms of deaths per million. And is that not the most important metric if it's all about saving lives?